So in today's video we want to cover uh, iron excretion, the last step in iron metabolism and this is a very very important part of iron metabolism to understand as it is a part of iron metabolism that the body cannot really regulate. And what do I mean by this? So let's start with the gastrointestinal tract right here, uh, GIT, gastrointestinal tract. So in our diet, we usually take in about 10 to 20 milligrams of iron per day. And of this iron that we take in, about 1 to 2 milligrams will be absorbed. At the same time, about 1 to 2 milligrams of iron will be lost every day. And the question is, how is this iron lost? Where does it go to? And in this video, I'm going to try and show you um, where this iron goes to. And secondly, why in men, this is about 1 milligrams per day. And in females, it is 2 milligrams per day. So you can see the 1 to 2 actually refers to the male and the female um, that has different rates of iron loss. Now, let's get back to the gastrointestinal tract. We've absorbed some of the iron. And for those of you who have seen the iron absorption video, you'll remember that as iron is absorbed, some of it will be stored in the duodenal cells that lines the gastrointestinal tract. And these cells are under normal circumstances. Um, after a time, they are actually desquamated or released from the gastrointestinal wall with the iron inside of them and as they are removed from the body with the feces you lose about 0.5 milligrams of iron in the process. A very small amount can be lost in the biliary tract which I haven't drawn here but let's just write it there the biliary tract and then a small amount can also be lost through the skin or sweating. Now this is really a very very small amount that is lost here. Even if you live in the tropics and you sweat all day long it will probably not really be very significant. Then we have the kidneys. So you can also lose a little bit of iron in the urine but it's really a small amount 0.05 milligrams per day. But recent studies have shown that it seems that the elderly may lose a lot more, as much as 0.5 milligrams per day, which is the same as you're losing in the gastrointestinal tract. I think it's still early days. We don't have much research to go on, but it's interesting. Now, females obviously lose much more iron, and that is through menstrual blood loss every month. Now, during the menstrual cycle, um, about 40 mils of blood will be lost and if we look at the amount lost here it's about 0.7 milligrams per day. We must also not forget what happens during pregnancy. So during pregnancy the fetus will take up about 270 milligrams of iron uh, from the mother and also the placenta will take up about 90 milligrams of iron. In the mother's blood system itself, an additional 450 milligrams of iron will be used to make additional red blood cells. And during delivery, another, so when the baby is delivered, another 200 milligrams of iron may be lost. And then after pregnancy, there's lactation. Uh, at which time another one milligrams of iron is lost per day. Now if we put all of this together we can see that the total cost in iron terms during pregnancy is about 1200 milligrams for the period. Now, this does not include lactation but from this we will have to subtract about 600 milligrams that we saved or that the woman saves because she did not menstruate but there's still a net additional need of about 600 milligrams for the period which is somewhere between 2, two to 2.5 milligrams of additional iron uh, per day. Then if we go to blood donation you give about 200 milligrams of iron 
per unit of blood donated. So let's summarize. We said that between 1 and 2 milligrams of iron is absorbed per day and the same amount is lost in men and in females we add the loss of menstruation. Pregnancy is a unique situation that is not accounted for in this normal 1 to 2 milligrams of loss per day. It will be much more than this figure. But in short, I think a key message to take home is that you cannot up or down regulate the, the amount of iron lost per day. So if you are iron overloaded, so let's say you have too much iron in your body, there's no way to increase the iron losses. And in the same way, if you are iron deficient, there is no way to limit the iron losses. All the control happens here at the level of absorption. But that is for another video.